Zena and her boyfriend Lei are psychotic maniacs in love. They are currently in a courtroom planning something big. A world-famous gangster named Kuhn has been caught and is being convicted for murders, assaults, robbery, and many unforgivable crimes. Being his lawyer, Zena takes a stand against the judge's decision. Suddenly, her boyfriend Lei gets up from the audience and starts firing at everyone. He is joined by his gang members, who are here to rescue Kuhn. After killing everyone present in the courtroom, Zena and Lei start making out. Kuhn orders them to let him out of the handcuffs first, but they only laugh at him. Suddenly, Suddenly, Kuhn notices an explosive in their hands, which blows up and kills him, while the couple is miraculously left unharmed. The scene cuts to a flashback. When Zena was first caught by Kuhn, he assaulted her in front of Lei, who couldn't raise his voice because he was scared of Kuhn's power. He silently tried to commit the unthinkable, but the bullets in the revolver ran short. At that moment, he vowed to make Kuhn pay. He also picked up Zena, telling her that their lives belong to each other. Back in the present, the couple's dream to kill Kuhn is finally accomplished. Outside, a SWAT team is waiting for the hearing to end. Their only job is to escort Kuhn out until Captain Gu hears a gunshot. Without waiting for official orders, he makes his way inside with his team. They get into an intense shootout with Lei's men. Xena pretends to be a damsel in distress and then stabs Gu in the back, but he manages to save himself and catch both Xena and her boyfriend. Ultimately, Lei sets off another explosive that kills him and blinds Gu forever. Xena, on the other hand, cries while holding her boyfriend's body. While being arrested, she vows to avenge his death by killing everyone Gu loves. In the following scene, Gu is told that he will never be able to see again. His only family is his daughter and his brother-like friend, Yan. They help him to the best of their abilities, but the trauma caused by the incident haunts Gu every night. The public blames him for all the deaths because he is the only SWAT personnel who came out alive from the court. Because of public pressure, he also loses his job. For the first week, Gu goes crazy and starts breaking things in the house. His daughter Sia keeps him sane most of the time, but in her absence, he can hardly think or work. Eventually, her playing the violin becomes his only way to relax. As days pass, Gu starts to heal. He also begins working on his hearing and other senses now that he can no longer see. One day, he surprises Sia by catching a ball thrown toward him. Gu is becoming daredevil. To test his skills, she throws several balls at him and finds out that he has mastered the art of seeing without eyes in only a few months. Yan is amazed by his friend when Gu can tell exactly where he is standing just by sensing his presence. Six months after the incident, Sia and Gu decide to go to Manila for a simple symphony competition. In the meantime, Xena is still in prison, counting the days until she can see Gu again. The gangster Kuhn had a son named Kang, who desperately wants to kill Xena. To do so, he sends a petition to move her to a different prison in Manula, but Xena knows about his intentions, so she refuses to sign the consent papers. Sia and Gu land in Manula and go directly to the theater for the competition. Sia loses her Rosen and is replaced by another girl. When she is alone backstage, a group of men forcefully drag her to their car. Gu senses that his daughter is not among the performers and gives her a call. She picks up, but Gu only hears the sound of her screams. He runs to the parking lot, but is seconds too late to catch the vehicle. After that, he quickly makes a call to the police. A few hours later, Gu is told that Sia's deformed dead body has been found near a river. She was attacked with acid and left to die. To identify the body, Gu touches her hand and discovers that it is not his daughter. Sia has been playing violin for over 10 years, and her fingers have thick calluses on them. This body doesn't have anything of such sort, which proves that she is still alive. Gu explains everything to the police officer, but the man refuses to believe him. He says the ID card found in her pocket is enough evidence, and no further actions will be taken. In a fit of rage, Gu attacks the officer, and the incident is broadcasted live on TV. Meanwhile, in prison, Xena sees the news and is delighted to see Gu suffering. After discovering that he's in Manula, she signs the consent form to be transferred to a prison there. In the next scene, she is masked, chained, and surrounded by many guards while on the way to the new prison. Suddenly, the vehicle stops, and Xena comes out with a gun in her hand, having killed everyone inside in less than a minute. She also ambushes all the guards following them and eventually escapes. When Kang finds out about the escape, he kills a guard in anger. He orders more men to find her as soon as possible, assuming that his father will only attain peace when she dies. 
Somewhere else, Gu is in handcuffs being told that his daughter is definitely dead. He realizes that the police are not going to help him and instead send him back home. Hence, when he gets the chance, he knocks out two of them and tries to escape. What he doesn't know is that Xena had been sitting in the front seat, waiting for him to do just that. Instead of killing him instantly, she pretends to be a good police officer who will help him find his daughter. Then, we finally get to see Sia with many other girls. They have been abducted by none other than Gangster Kang. He runs a huge traffic ring, kidnapping girls from around the globe and selling them through the dark web. He takes extra interest in Sia because of her beauty and raises her price. Ah, oh, what a compliment. Simultaneously, since Xena knows everything about Kang's traffic ring, she tells Gu exactly how they can find his daughter. The police won't help them because they have been bribed to keep their mouths shut when it comes to Kang's business. Even though Xena wants to kill Sia in the end, she is willing to be on Gu's side until then. They decide to use Xena as bait and get into the place where trafficked girls are kept. With her help, Gu finds the number of a local dealer who accepts the girl and sends them to an old woman. She is the mediator in charge of checking if the girls are good enough for their clients. She approves of Xena but senses that Gu is not there with good intentions. After sending Xena inside, the woman points a gun at Gu but he uses his intuition to knock her out before she shoots. Then, he follows Xena behind but both of them are caught right after. By now, the live stream on the dark web has started. Many clients are watching the girls perform one after another, bidding money for their lives. When it is Sia's turn, she plays the violin beautifully. Kang turns the live stream off, wanting the girl all for himself, but when he tries to touch her, she attacks him. Kang promises to teach her a lesson tomorrow and increases her price by 6 million yuan. Somewhere else, Xena is hung upside down and Gu is bound by a chained collar. Kang's partner Beth comes to taunt Xena and remind her of her boyfriend's death. When Xena in turn makes fun of her, she is drowned until she gets dizzy and then brought back up. Gu manages to break his handcuffs but is easily overpowered by the gangsters. When Beth walks out for some time, he manages to turn the fight around and kill every one of them. He also breaks the water tank and saves Xena's life. Beth tells Kang that she has caught Xena but upon returning to check up on the prisoners, both Xena and Gu are ready to attack her. She is held hostage and asked to reveal where Sia is. The woman only opens her mouth once a glass shard is held to her neck. She doesn't know which one is Gu's daughter, but all the girls kidnapped within the last week are with a man named Mai, who is also Kang's right-hand man. Suddenly, the police inspector, Rama, arrives at the scene with his squad. Before Beth is caught, Xena pushes her, making the glass shard go deep into her throat and kill her. Then, the two run away to a house that Xena claims belongs to her. In reality, it belongs to one of the police officers she killed when she escaped prison. Gu still doesn't suspect her and continues cleaning his injuries. Somewhere else, Kang is told about Beth's death, so he sends his right-hand man, Mai, to kill the escapees. A while later, Rama knocks on the apartment door alongside Mai and his people. Gu gets a hint of this, channels his inner Macaulay Culkin, and sets up several traps in the house. When they break in, the gas cylinder blows up, killing half of the gangsters. Mai attacks Gu while Xena fights the rest of the insignificant enemies. Gu is about to be killed until he jumps out the window using the rope he set earlier. He meets Mai again in the hallway and captures him using the same rope, which is now tied to an elevator. Upon being tortured, Mai brings them to the storage unit where the stolen girls are kept. They set many girls free, but Sia is not one of them. This means that she has either already been sold or she is at Kang's place waiting to be sold the next day. At the police station, Yan arrives and inquires about progress Rama has made in the case. When Rama refuses to share information, he goes looking for his friend on his own. Meanwhile, Gu holds Xena at knife point and asks her to reveal who she is. It turns out that he sensed the smell of a rotten corpse in the apartment that Xena claimed was hers. She simply smiles and says the same words she said when her boyfriend died. Gu registers who she is and calls her a crazy woman. Before they talk further, Yan arrives and points a gun at Xena. She quickly kills Mai to be the only person who knows where Sia is. If they kill her at this point, they might never get to see Sia, which gives her an advantage. Xena orders Gu to choose between his friend and his daughter. If he chooses the latter, he will have to kill Yan at this instant. Without hesitating, Gu chooses his daughter and stabs Yan, but not deep enough to kill him. After that, the partners sit down inside a car and talk about their pasts. 
Zena reveals that she was sold to a gang by her father, who she killed years later. Ever since her birth, her only family had been her late boyfriend, which is why she wants to kill Gu in front of his daughter and turn her into a person just like her. Gu acknowledges that it is an ultimate punishment, but he needs her help to get to his daughter in the first place. After that, they go to a local black market gun seller. He was a middleman who sold Zena to the gangsters. Hence, she kills him before stealing the entire bus of arms and ammunition. One thing Gu doesn't forget to get is the man's bouncy balls. In the following scene, Sia is brought outside for the next dark web livestream. Kang gives her the option to either stay with him or be sold to a stranger. But as a reply, Sia says that her father is coming to get her. Right then, the vehicle breaks into the main entrance and Xena starts firing randomly at everyone. Since she is protected by the vehicle, none of the bullets fired at them get her. Amidst the chaos, Gu is able to throw a bouncy ball at Sia to tell her he is here. She safely keeps the ball with her, waiting for him to take her home. The guards are foolishly sent outside to fight the two when they have already entered the house. They turn the lights off and proceed to kill all the guards, one after another. Eventually, Kang is left with only his lawyer and Sia. The lawyer also abandons him, saying that he is better off dead. As a last resort, Kang attaches a time bomb to Sia. But before anything else, he is shot and killed by Xena. After that, she hangs Sia upside down with a chain. If Gu knows where she is, he can pick her up. Hence, she throws the bouncy ball at him. Gu catches the ball and locates her successfully. He also shoots Xena dead right before catching his daughter. However, the storm hasn't passed yet, as the bomb is still attached to her. Right then, Yan arrives, revealing that his wound wasn't fatal. He helps Gu by giving him tools to defuse the explosive. The plan works, and all the good people are saved in the end. In the last scene, Yan and Sia come to see Gu in prison. They indulge in happy conversations about life and dating, not at all traumatized by the events of the film. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.